Esther's sister told Esther and friends one of the best law of attraction stories Esther's heard in a while about something not very significant but all law of attraction stories are about things that are not very significant because law of attraction is just a fact that is happening all the time so as you get used to it and begin watching for the evidence of it so she is watching her little one-year-old granddaughter and they are moving through a mall a big mall in Houston sort of passing the time and this little girl is in a stroller and she has on really bright beautiful shiny new shoes that her mother has just purchased for her at some significant price and as Jeannie is moving through the mall with this baby at some point she realizes one of the shoes is no longer on one of the feet unsettling she didn't want to lose any shoes especially new shoes and so she begins retracing her step not an easy thing because she has no idea where she's been so she moves up and down four levels of a very large mall and does not find the shoe goes back to the hotel room thinking maybe we never got out the door with it but it is not there either and so the next day still no shoe and another day passes and now Jeannie has given up on the shoe you might say and yet that morning she felt an inspiration to put the one remaining shoe on the baby now that may seem odd but it seemed like the thing to do and so off she goes to the mall and so they're just letting the time pass she is having a nice time she is babysitting while the mother is in meetings and moving around sort of looking for the shoe but really haven't given up on it and then she comes to a buffet she wants to get something for the little girl to eat looks at the menu thinks no it's not quite right begins to walk away and feels an overwhelming impulse to go back there anyway even though her logic has said this is not the place for us to eat her feeling of this is the place I want to be was very strong and because Jeannie was tuned in tapped in turned on having a wonderful day with her little granddaughter she followed the impulse and went in and is sitting and eating with Ava and while they are having lunch four teenagers come by and they say the other shoe is in the bathroom <laughs> what bathroom the bathroom down by such and such on another floor over there in the other end of the mall well now Jeannie has all of the baby's things and all of their food there and one of the little girls says I'll go get it so she goes and brings the shoe back now isn't that just a really wonderful law of attraction story it's a needle in the haystack story but all law of attraction stories are needle in the haystack stories aren't they because when you don't know where something is it feels impossible to find it but when you know that someone knows when you know that someone knows now Jeannie was not spending much time worrying about this shoe which is really the point that we are making once she gave up looking for it once it was no longer lost once it was no longer an issue now she's just resumed normal life running around a mall with a baby with one shoe not exactly normal life but it was a happy life so what we are saying to you is that these things are happening to you all the time too aren't they things that seem not plausible not even likely but we want to bring you by the time this gathering comes to an end today to a place of realizing that all things are possible that there is nothing that you could want as insignificant as a button or finding a shoe or more significant like a castle or an empire or a movement there is nothing that is out of reach for you you've just got to train yourself into the frequency of it so we're eager to talk with you about it, whatever is important to you there is nothing off limits and there is no order of business but there will be a sort of building of momentum it is our expectation that you will achieve a vibrational movement today that will put you in a place of being more accessible to those who are running around with you who are shining spotlights on your path of least resistance in order to help you to find the other shoe but it's not the finding of the shoe that we like most about this story it's the 
unfolding of the story. It's the cooperative universe. It's the cooperative components. Because those cooperative components are what make up your life, you see. You are all day moving around with the cooperative components of your own desire or with the cooperative components of the absence of your own desire. But cooperative components are surrounding you constantly because you are offering a vibration that insists that components that are matching, that are cooperating with the vibration that you are sending must come to you. You getting the sense of this? The only thing that you can control is your own vibration. And your own vibration will bring to you cooperative components of whatever the vibration is. For a while we've been saying to you that you are the creator of your own reality. And we explained to you that through the processing of life that you've been sending off rockets of desire, knowing what you don't want, knowing what you do want, you've been asking. And you've created a vibrational momentum that amounts to a vortex version of you. It contains everything that you've become. All of the clarity, all of the mastery, all of the brilliance, all of the joy, all of the love, all of the beingness that you have been living over lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes is amassed in this vibrational version of that which is you. Your source is there, that which you call God is there. Your inner being is there. It is a vibrational version of the furthest most expansion of that which you are. And it spins in a very high flying, non-resistant frequency and it amasses cooperative components the likes of which we are not able to find words to describe. The mastery of your vortexual vibrational reality is unspeakable, really. It is not unfeelable, but it is unspeakable. So you've been hearing us talking about this vortex. We've been spinning in the air, offering this experience of a vortex. And today we are wanting to say to you that that vortex exists and your point of attraction has a relationship with it. In other words, if your vortex is spinning, as we say that it is in this very high flying, non-resistant frequency of success and well-being, then you must be in the vibrational vicinity of it in order for what's in it vibrationally to begin to manifest into your actual experience. And we've been describing that point of attraction as your vibrational grid. It's like the framework that will fill in with the details, but you establish the framework, the vibrational framework, and then the details fill in that match the framework that you have accomplished. And that framework we're calling a grid. Maybe there are better words. It's the word we're using for now, your point of attraction, your grid. And now we're wanting to say to you that that grid is spinning too. In other words, you've got this vibration going on with you as your inner being has this vibration going on. And the question that we really want to ask is what is the vibrational proximity of the vortex version of you and the grid version of you? In other words, who are you in terms of vibration and who are you in terms of what you're allowing to manifest? That's really the question of the day, the week, the year, the century, the everything. That's the only thing that ever matters to you is what is your frequency in relationship to the one that you have carefully crafted over all that you've lived. And the answer to that question lies within the emotions that you feel. The better you feel, the closer those frequencies are. The worse you feel, the more disparity there is between who you really are and what you've come to and what you're allowing yourself to be right now this red hot minute. What is your point of attraction right now? A while ago, we wrote a book and in the book, we describe the emotional scale where you might be depressed. You might be feeling fearful. You might be really discouraged or you might be feeling love. You might be feeling appreciation or something in between. You might be feeling overwhelmed or frustration. If you're feeling depressed, then revenge is a step in the right direction. If you're feeling revenge, then anger is a step in the right direction. But on this emotional scale, there are frequencies of greater and greater resistance. The worse you feel, the more resistance in the frequency and the lower the frequency because of the resistance. So when we say to you that you have a very high flying frequency in your vibrational vortex, then that must make you understand that if you can achieve a consistent high flying frequency in your day to day offering of thoughts and words and behaviors that with a little bit of practice, you can get pretty good momentum going. And as that momentum becomes something that's so practiced that it's easy to keep going, then more and more you will be vibrating in sync with who you really are. So there will be little resistance or no resistance between 
who you really are and what you are wanting and where you're standing so that you can receive the manifestations. You receive the inclinations. You receive the inspirations. You receive the impulses. You become a cooperative component in your own brilliant creation of life. And when you become a consistent cooperative component to the vortex that you've been creating, then the movement in your life experience is very exhilarating because, first of all, you feel good most of the time. And you have a leverage, you have flowing through you this energy that creates worlds. And what you're accomplishing in terms of how it feels and in terms of how it is perceived by those around you is really magnificent. In other words, when you begin applying the leverage of this energy that creates worlds because you've tuned yourself into the frequency where it exists then wonderful things begin happening for you and it's not just the end result that we're excited about for you it's a joyful journey along the way and are you refreshed good now what in um, a book called The After Death Journal of an American Philosopher, which Jane Roberts channels William James. He or she describe a really beautiful description of an omnipresent, omnipotent um, light um, that's everywhere. What is that in Abraham speak? Anything that is visual is a translation of vibration, just as anything that's auditory is a translation of vibration. Even what you're smelling is a translation of vibration, feeling with your fingertips, tasting. These are all vibrational interpretations. So when someone sees that light, they are in vibrational alignment with that high frequency and translating it visually. What is it though? I mean, is it all that is? Is it our higher self? Is it, can we put a name on it? Well, we would describe it as that highest frequency energy that exists. It's that pure, non-resistant energy. And in order to know it, in order to hear it or see it, you must be in the vibrational identical vicinity of it okay. and so a word like all that is we use that word meaning that source energy but if you really want to be objective all that is means everything that's on this disc and 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 that is not all of that that's that so in the same way that you say beauty is in the eye of the beholder source is too God is too in other words that frequency is available to all all the time the only question is where are you in vibrational relationship to it and it's interesting to us that someone had to croak to describe it yeah. Yeah. when it's there for all of you all the time but it's just someone like us attempting to make tactile and visual and real for you those things that are vibrational in nature that a lot of you just don't see. Mm -hmm. Pretty wonderful the things that you do see. Have you noticed the beauty of this planet? After reading the After Death Journal, I don't think I've been afraid of dying. I mean, he describes it. It's just beautiful. It's interesting that you would mention that because Esther is hearing so much from Jerry these days. And she thought, oh, an after-death journal of Jerry Hicks, that might be a fun thing. <laughs> she started getting one every day. Mm -hmm. And if it weren't for that awful death word, because mm -hmm. she doesn't accept death as existing, but the afterlife life of, right. the afterlife life yeah. of, or, or the intertwined life, the eternal love or the never ending. In other words, there are so many ways to describe this continuity that we are all mm -hmm. living together. And it's just really nice when more of our human friends come to the party mm -hmm. and see the light. Yeah.